which one aspect out of this week's many celestial movements happens to set off a bright spark in your life that, depending on your sign, could be just what you've needed. Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the days and weeks ahead through the lens of astrology with a view to helping you make more confident decisions through life's chapters. I'm Charlie, a fourth year associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for radio's The Bob and Sherry Show, sharing weekly horoscope insights. Today's episode is for the week beginning Sunday the 29th of October with a Mercury and Mars conjunction setting things off in a powerful way. A Venus trine retrograde Uranus aspect may also offer a pleasant surprise through someone or something completely unexpected, which changes the way you feel about yourself and life entirely. Plus, Saturn stations direct in Pisces and, like a little time machine, has reset you back to where you were March time regarding a decision or some action and planning that you need to take. If you hadn't guessed already, this is a highly stimulating week. I'll look at each horoscope using the solar chart method, which forecasts by putting the sun in your sign as the first house point of the chart. But if you are lucky enough to know your exact birth time, then your predictions can be completely personalised. And if you're nervous, unsure, or just curious about what exactly an astrology reading can even tell you, then check out the 15 minute audio reading option, which is like your own private podcast, delivering the most prominent messages currently showing up in your chart. From there, you can go on to decide if it resonates and dive deeply into readings or simply stick to the weekly and daily horoscope shows. As everything starts to kind of kick up a notch, life is shifting into high gear where things cannot just simply go on as they are, as they have been. Things that were fine left untended to. They now need a lot of tending to and the importance of making well thought out deliberate life choices is key. It's the deliberate choices that bring you personal fulfillment. Like when you make a choice that aligns your life correctly with your values, where values are simply the things you find most important, things that you should and want to prioritise. That's essentially a point of harmony and happiness. The way you handle your options determines your life's general direction where each choice sets you on an adjusted path, which is how you build success and satisfaction. And it's how you make change when you're feeling stuck or like you've hit some kind of plateau. Achieving goals is much easier when each consecutive decision adds up to this kind of net positive impact adding benefits and bonuses to your experience instead of a negative impact where it removes the possibility of you having or achieving the things that you dream of. When you're in control of your choices and you make them confidently, you feel clarity. And even if the decision or choice is a risk, you pick an option like it's a well-calculated, well-thought-out risk. Or if the choice you make is unusual and goes against what you're used to, you can still achieve a sense of purpose and comfort in the face of uncertainty instead of feeling anxiety. You know how when you make a decision and until you know the result, the outcome of that choice, the feeling you have inside is continuous stress and worry. Constantly wondering if you chose correctly. Well, what if instead of stress and worry, it was all excitement and confidence. One of the most important benefits of conscious decision making is the resilience it offers you. It sounds cheesy and corny, but you've fought battles that others haven't. You've endured things that people just wouldn't understand. And it's in making continued deliberate choices that are right for you that acts as this source of motivation that keeps you going. It keeps you winning against, ultimately, everything you come face to face with. Improving your quality of life because no matter what goes on, in the face of change or in the face of the unknown or adversity, whatever it is the world has shown you that it's acutely capable of, you can still feel harmony 
and a sense of peace because you trust yourself. But how do you trust a decision? It's easy to suggest that making your decisions confidently feels good, but how does that actually happen? This show explores the cycles of human nature. It explores the choices you made last time when a similar decision came up and how that went. It looks into your options, your current options, throughout the extreme timing of life and highlights rhythms of evolution, the patterns, the paths of maturing, with the idea of refining and improving each next step a little bit more to build this kind of aggregate of happy possibilities. Understanding life cycles has helped me figure out why I was feeling unhealthy and unfulfilled in the past. And I hope it does the same for you. This week begins with the conjunction of Mercury and Mars. This is happening in the sign of Scorpio. And I want to start with a slightly retrospective look at this aspect before looking at its current meaning. The last time Mercury, the planet of the mind, met with Mars, the planet of action, in the sign of Scorpio was November 10th, 2021. Now think back to that time or pause this episode and go scroll your text messages or Facebook memories to see what was going on for you then. Do a little investigating and figure out what was the main focus for you. And really the biggest question is to not look for or to not look at what was going right at that time, but really look at what was going wrong. What part of your life or your experience started to take a nosedive at that time. These two planets in water signs are kind of limp in their behaviour. It's like a zero out of ten, do not recommend kind of experience, even though Mars traditionally rules Scorpio. Action, any kind of action, through a watery lens, especially the elusive Scorpio energy, isn't always the most solid. Okay, so it's November 2021. What did you do then that has created or added to a situation for you to solve, fix or remedy in the now? Loans, credit cards, taxes, any of those are very relevant, but so are things like marriage or starting a business or co-signing on something with someone. And this could also point to a health-related matter that cropped up and you chose to ignore until now where it's finally screaming at you loudly. Using hindsight and wisdom and all that good stuff, you can do things better now from here on in. Maybe it was something started during that time and it went wayward, it went rogue or just got extremely out of control for some time after. And now you're rolling up your sleeves, ready to fix it, or you're finding yourself forced to deal with it and balance things out. Planets coming together, which is just basically two planets being in the same place at the same time, adding the flavour of each one into the mix in equal measures. For this, it's the blend of Mercury's quick, sharp-mindedness with Mars's capacity for action or even its capacity for anger. So expect things like impulsive behaviours or even hurtful words or just angry thoughts by yourself. That's possible too. And angry thoughts can go one of two ways. Net positive and negative, to use an earlier term, where the net positive angry thoughts would be like getting really wound up by something and then saying, you know, watch this space, going on to dedicate yourself to something and achieve something wildly amazing from a point of anger or discrimination or judgment. The anger of an unjust situation could drive you into activism or into helping a situation that's unfair or it could be you using your willpower to prove to yourself that you've got the ability to do what you say you do, create your own experiences and do so successfully. The negative version of this would be angry words that result in you feeling less capable, less worthy and less driven to do anything. This could be words that seem to push you close to depression or they show up as some kind of emotional dysregulation. And with things like the law of attraction or the idea of manifesting what you desire by imagining it with your mind, faking it till you make it. This is all really nice in theory, but it doesn't actually work in practice because your wiring is wired in its own wiry way and you're here to learn and master it 
accepting your personal rhythm, not trying to change it, which goes against nature's intention. The world is split into three emotional types and each one has a specific way of interacting with the world and manifesting based on your individual rhythm. I'll link an episode on the emotional archetypes in the show notes below if you would like to find out which of the three types you are. So this week starting out with an angry thought that's motivating or depressing. It could also begin with a spark, like a literal spark from some faulty wiring, all the way through to a bright spark idea in your mind, because this conjunction gives power to intelligence and electricity. This could also be the discovery of a mistake too, as kind of part of this process of realisation. And another possibility is a debate where nobody backs down. It's like a competitive discussion or an all-round experience of difficulty when trying to quiet the mind. As intense as all of that sounds, the spark or the boost that happens on Sunday might be just what you needed. And all is explained in detail for each individual sign. The week progresses with Venus in Virgo, trine Uranus, which is retrograde in Taurus. This translates as you may be in for a pleasant surprise that you knew you deserved. This could indicate a more exciting social life or a situation where you bump into someone you were just thinking of, coincidentally. This is a good time for general fun and entertainment outside of your normal activities, outside of your normal routine. So switch up the way you have fun this week to make the most of this specific aspect. Don't stick to the same old ways. Add one extra thing to your day and make it something unusual that you don't normally do. In the general world, Venus is money, romance, beauty, fashion, agreements. And Uranus is technology, rebellion, electricity, genius, experiments, it's science, it's social awareness. Combining the two, this could be some new fashion trends emerging or some financial agreements that clear up messy, loose ends. The previous Earth sign aspect where Venus trined Uranus was around December 20th, 2022. Back then you may have made a decision on something or liberated yourself from a situation that changed your finances moving forward. Or maybe you had an urge for a new way to earn money that brings you more free time without sacrificing security. We approach the weekend and with the sun in Scorpio opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus, there's a little bit of distortion where you realise that you weren't seeing something as it truly was. This can be as much of a good thing as it can be a bad thing. For example, if you see a situation as more scary or daunting than it actually turns out to be. It feels amazing when you finally settle that situation and it's kind of a weight off your shoulders. Right now, the only thing that really hurts or hinders you is when you take on more than you have the capacity to fulfill. So this in its not so desirable expression can be a point of brief, general or financial overstretch. And I hope that if you are in an uncertain position, you allow this information to settle your worries and that in a weird way, focusing and attacking it head on helps you understand that you're on the right track. There is a necessary confrontation now And hopefully you feel less stressed and more accepting. There is the potential for an interesting development with a secondary opposition in the mix between Venus in Virgo and Neptune, which is retrograde in Pisces. With this planetary opposition playing a prominent part of the week, you could be very gently confronted with how things in finances, food or love have not lived up to your expectations or not supported you in the best way possible. And yes, this could come with a moment of feeling disappointed or disillusioned, which is really the most bottom ebb of this. And from there, you know that you've reached the most absolute point of understanding on a specific area of your life. And nothing really celebrates the shift out of disillusionment or having your head in the sand. Like this weekend's message of Saturn finally moving direct. When Saturn is in Pisces, the energy of the planet contrasts the energy of the sign. Saturn stands for structure and discipline, whereas Pisces is all fantasy and blur. What happens as a result 
is a few difficulties in creating boundaries or sticking to structure, you're not losing your mind or your willpower. You're not flaky or unable to stick to something. It's just that since March 2023, engaging your more logical and organisational abilities has been a little bit watered down. Intuition and emotions dominate more than reason and rationalisation. And this energy is with you for the next two and a half years. Saturday, November the 4th, Saturn turns direct in Pisces at the zero degree. It's basically done a massive rewind and taken everyone and everything back to early March when it entered Pisces and to do some reflective research. The last time that Saturn was in Pisces was May 1993. This could be a little bit more of a difficult time frame to reflect on, but if you can remember your experiences from back then, or if you can ask someone from your family or someone you might know who remembers what was going on for you, especially if you were a child or a teenager, then asking them, hey, what was happening back around May 1993 could be very helpful. And if not, then the horoscope readings each look at the possibilities of this transit for your sign with a specific view at the main message of this summer retrograde season. Now is a time of insight and breakthrough where you're peering through the veil or you're getting comfortable with proceeding forward through hazy and foggy environments. I've timestamped each zodiac sign horoscope below for your listening convenience and efficiency. This week for Aries, Sunday shows that stress could directly impact your health. And you may be saying, well, okay, I'm aware of that now. But the point of this message is really suggesting that some stress which began back around November 2021 is something that doesn't have to keep on the way it is. Some rifts in your relationships, some changes, some meanness, or just all round not very nice energy has contributed to the progression of where your physical and mental health is today. So arguments and things, stressful things with others in a stressful environment, work or home life related, have contributed to nervous energy in your body that has resulted in bumps, cuts, bruises, scrapes, bouts of sickness from stress related worry and maybe even not eating. If you feel like you've been almost consistently on and off unwell for the last two-ish years, it may not be a coincidence. When your mind can't think straight because of the domination of something or someone else, you're not focused enough on the task you're doing in that moment and accidents happen. You also struggle to eat and this conjunction suggests a poor intake of B vitamins, which are vitamins that help the mind and also issues with electrolytes, which help the physical body. Some kind of deficiencies in these due to not eating enough, due to the stress, could have contributed to doing a kind of number on your health. Mars is your ruling planet, so a sudden realisation that a situation or an environment has been causing you problems all along could be oddly relieving. You shift fully into problem-solving mode now, and you need to do something behind the scenes, some kind of research for the next step that you're going to take, your next job, your next action move, whatever it is, you're getting something in place to secure your future independently from the things that seem to be kind of tying you to places and people currently. This points to all around making a formal plan that you tell nobody else about, literally taking behind the scenes action to change the job or relationship situation that has been causing you stress and ill health an action that you probably started thinking about in November 2021, where if you really are serious about starting to do your research, checking out your options for what you can do next, reaching out to others in private, then you could see really positive results develop around December 27th, 2023. Venus in Virgo trine Uranus, which is retrograde in Taurus, shows a little bit of fluctuation in income. This is more coming in as much as it is going out and there's a possibility of a little bit of a financial struggle, or at least the perception of a financial struggle at some point this week. And outside of monetary issues, this could simply be a change up of the things that you value. What is important to you? Those things are probably changing rapidly and some kind of power struggle that has either found a solution or has just naturally come to a head 
could leave you with some strong opinions that impact the very next decision that you're about to make. When Saturn turns direct in Pisces, this is a very cleansing time. Your inner thoughts, your desires, they're kind of refreshed and you're ready to look at the potential karma of not making a big change now. Where karma is just the law of cause and effect. So essentially, if you don't take action now, you may get the sense that you're about to commit to another cycle of karmic matters, repeating the recent issues that you've had in the last couple of years. As much as this is a time of complete self-discovery, it's also a personal revolution where you'll withdraw from the expectation of others, you'll be much more comfortable doing your own thing. It can be difficult if you're trying to hang on to your old identity or you're trying to stay in the same life, location that you've lived in for the past three years. It could also be a time of confusion, disorientation and frustration because the old structures of your life are undeniably changing and cannot be the same way anymore. Let go of your past ways of doing things and find new, new, like brand new avenues to pursue. Follow any hunches or urges to withdraw into solitude and see that solitude as a gift, as opposed to feeling, you know, cut off from other people. It's likely the only people falling away now are those that you cannot relate to on an emotional level anyway. There are tons of new possibilities running across your mind. So chase those instead of people. It may be hard to know which ideas to follow up because there are so many. So just start exploring them all. Enjoy the path of discovery. The next step of your journey is in just getting going and figuring it out along the way. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is Capricorn and your earth sign is Libra. Listen to these two horoscopes to get a more well-rounded read to your week ahead. The week ahead for Taurus with the Mars-Mercury conjunction happening in your seventh house of relationships. So that's personal relationships, close relationships, people that you regularly share part of your everyday life with. Some issues here may include rude or harsh words. And in some cases it could be turned into an adult nature. If that's your thing, it could be some intimate talk, but generally harsh words or tough love is indicated. Something recently happened where a decision that was made could be really bothering you and it might be you that's ready to open up and let the words fly about how you feel things were handled. And if this is romantic, you'll want to clear the air about something that's been upsetting you. This could also somehow connect with your romantic status from November 2021. And if this is business wise, you'll maybe want to keep a close eye on the financial books. Don't make any rash decisions with business accounts or do anything that significantly changes your current income source. Patience is key. December the 27th will be the next point of development from which you can take another step forwards towards the life you are creating with a stronger sense of personal and material security. Venus in Virgo trine, Uranus retrograde in Taurus. It's in your sign. It gives you a boost in a social energy format. But this is from the outside looking in. This isn't you wanting to get out there. It's everyone out there wanting a piece of you. But interestingly, it's your friendships that offer a lot of expansion now. It's really through your social network that the most appropriate opportunities make their way to you. And a really good tip is... The healthier the friendship, the more aligned and rewarding that the opportunity you receive from it will be. Low vibe people are going to hit you with the low vibe offers and obviously vice versa. Those doing the most with themselves, with their life, will offer you the most. The sun in Scorpio opposite Jupiter, which is retrograde in your sign of Taurus, is a 50-50 split on how this shows up for you depending on the choices you make. It could be the choice to be passive and being passive is not necessarily your best path right now. Being passive is kind of dwelling and floating in suspended energy where you use going with the flow, quote unquote, as an excuse for not putting in the necessary work or doing the hardest thing first. Sometimes going with the flow isn't 
spiritual. It isn't called for. If there are things that need to be done, they need to be done. Alternatively, you could be face to face with challenging tasks, to do's and knuckling down on them, creating your own luck by putting in the effort. Venus and Virgo opposite Neptune, which is retrograde in Pisces, suggests a pep talk or someone in your life who sees potential in you that you're not cashing in. This could feel uncomfortable and that someone else's projection kind of makes you realise where you are slacking off yourself. And that's never really nice to come to terms with as an individual. But if you can instead use this to maximise your potential by doing the things that you've been slacking on, the gain is enormous. So don't take anything personally unless you're taking it as a personal motivation. When Saturn turns direct in Pisces on Saturday, if there have been any obstacles to your goals or just the feeling of a non-starter situation or maybe you just felt daunted at the level of work that this new situation is going to take, making you feel like you'll never actually achieve the end goal, well, this mindset dissolves a little bit and while it still won't be clear on exactly how you're going to achieve this thing, the biggest hurdle is really getting going and just starting. Begin the process and discover as you evolve through it. Throw out whatever is not working and continue with what is. It's not the most glamorous of processes. There are going to be some mix-ups and a little bit of a trial and error feeling to this. As long as you are mentally and physically well equipped, eating right, sleeping right, all that good stuff, the basics of really taking care of yourself before you go into any situation, you'll discover everything as you need to and you will make gains. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead and the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is Aquarius and your earth sign is Scorpio. Listening to all of these horoscopes can give you a more detailed insight into the week ahead. This week for Gemini, the Mars-Mercury conjunction in your sixth house relates to routine, wellness, diet. It relates to your everyday schedule, your day in, day out job, your habits. This could be a blessing where some health or structure matters are overcome and you get a boost of confidence and courage. And while your most stressful sensation may be a few annoying skin problems, really everything in your life seems to be offering strength, solidarity and security. And this doesn't mean that, you know, everything is all rosy. There could still be an argument crop up today. But it's more so that you'll be successful at defending yourself and getting your point across with whatever does erupt. No matter what kind of debate pops up, try to remember that it's you and the person against the issue, not you and the person against each other. And this helps debating become so much easier to do because it's less personal when everyone kind of focuses on solving a bigger matter as opposed to focusing on being right. Venus in Virgo trine Uranus, which is retrograde in Taurus, is representing a period that I like to call the cleanup. Something you've been neglecting and it's no longer procrastinating now. It's straight up neglecting. You'll be better at handling it. So any unfinished business gets finished and ignored matters within the home or a living situation or something similar finally gets attention. The sun in Scorpio opposite Jupiter retrograde in Taurus is a tug of war between who is right and who is wrong in a partnership, which is either business or marriage. So this could be the erupting issue. And the funny thing about the aspect is that you are right. And in some way, so is the other. So essentially nobody's wrong, which I'm sure doesn't make a currently challenging decision process any easier. It's just about seeing a 360 degree view instead of these isolated perspectives. Venus in Virgo opposite Neptune, which is retrograde in Pisces, suggests that there is so much compassion and care within this connection that a positive solution is discovered. Or if it's not a problem that's being solved and it's just simply an agreement, then that can be reached. And this has the effect of showing you that the more you commit to people that you are in tune with, the easier it is to see those that you are not so aligned with. Saturday when Saturn turns direct 
in Pisces, it could be a huge relief for you. The challenge has been to prove yourself, to find your feet in the world. And a few dreamy opportunities that came up, ones that you're exploring with an open mind, kind of sift themselves out, leaving only the strongest potentials left. This is great if you are a habitual multitasker, or if you start many projects and have a ton of things that are halfway done, halfway through the completion process. This becoming more defined can really help you focus your attention on what the most beneficial projects are for you. Ambitions are strong right now, but they are not necessarily quick. So don't expect a fast turnaround or a quick path to success. You're on the right track, but a lot of discipline and surrender, both at the same time, are key to success. You're planning long-term things, which in contrast will make the things that are not meant to be part of your life long-term feel really frustrating or annoying. You may even be face to face with some overly authoritative rules in your current workplace or in your home that stifle you because the point is to push you into new areas. Maintaining a consistent path isn't easy, especially with so many things to do. So consider checking out the brain dump pages list. Brain dumping is a method where you take everything that's in your mind and you just dump it out onto the paper and then follow an organizational format. Doing this on a printed brain dump organizer instead of trying to do all of this inside your head can relieve all kinds of stress and tension or nervous anxiety. And I'll list the printable sheets in the show notes for you below. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is Pisces and your earth sign is Sagittarius. Listening to all of these horoscopes together can give you deeper insight into your week ahead. This week for Cancer, the Mars-Mercury conjunction in your fifth house, where the fifth house is really things like your talent or any hobbies you have. It's your performance skills, like speaking gigs, speaking skills. It's your investments. It's taking creative risks. Something sparks here. Something ignites here on Sunday. And an action that happens today is like a boost in the area of your creative progress. And whatever it is, it gets you into the spotlight. It gets people talking about you about your project, what you're doing, and how it's surprisingly and pleasantly powerful. Venus in Virgo, trying retrograde, Uranus in Taurus, opens up the floor for invitations to so many social opportunities, and making a connection at one of these allows you to further your career, which could actually be the highlight of this week. And in an unusual but necessary contrast, you'll begin to see that your previous and recent acquaintances, while they have had their own little special influence on you, on your life, they no longer fit. This whole year for cancer is about outgrowing people, especially people of the last three years. And it's quite a specific time frame, but think of your changing friendship landscape since 2020. Obviously a lot has changed since 2020, but right now some friendships have to fade into the background because they're not meant to be moving forward with you, at least not at this point. The weekend begins with the sun in Scorpio opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus and a little bit of a health bump in the road is suggesting that either you've overdone or underdone some essential nutrients or even some stuff that you know you should be better with and now you can feel the effects so keep your food game strong this week and if it's not the nutrient side of your daily existence that needs a little bit of reworking then it may be boundaries for the work situation. If someone is overstepping the mark, someone who acts or assumes an authoritative position over you, this could be equally stressful or cause you just as many health issues as incorrect nourishment. Cancer is related to food. It's a sign on the wheel that nurtures something or someone into full form. And if other people are putting you off your dinner, if you lose appetite thanks to others being stressy, or if you're just disorganised and think it's fine to skip meals, then you could find out the hard way that prioritizing nutrient dense snacks is often going to be about 70% of the answers to a lot of your problems if not just for supplying your brain with the right components to make the best decisions that set you up for success venus in virgo opposite retrograde neptune in pisces is a need to detach from friends which really seems to be a continuous theme this week and i want to just outright say change your circle and change it now but it's changing anyway and it will continue to shift 
for another two years. So if you feel lonely or out of place, know that the end is in sight. A friendship realignment has been on the cards for a while to the point that you may not even really be able to count your two friends on one hand. There can be a lot of fakeness in the friendship arena for you. So it's probably best to just sit this one out, be polite with all your acquaintances and let nature take its course. Saturday when Saturn turns direct in Pisces, you'll kind of refresh all decisions that you make. Focus on ensuring that your version, that your idea of security is being met with each choice. Saturday when Saturn turns direct in Pisces, you'll refresh all the decisions that you make and you'll want to ensure that your version, your idea of security is being met with each choice. And the specific time frame that this is relating to began on the 22nd of December 2017. So if you can look back to December 2017, what your biggest problem to solve was at that time. And everything moving forward now will almost always have to prioritise that subject matter so that it never causes you problems which led to certain situations ever again. You've got a good grip on lots of new stuff about life, how to live, all the things you've learned so far, and you're able to make any changes that feel necessary. This is about assimilating all of your previous experiences and creating a future set of principles that you can live by much more permanently. And as you move out of this discovery phase and into a phase of walking the walk of everything you've learned since 2017, as you do this, make sure to flip the bird to the haters. Or just don't be scared, don't be worried to disconnect with someone because of differences of view. It's way too glamorous that we're supposed to be in groups where we accept each other's different opinions. And I appreciate that we are all living completely different worlds of which we are each the centre of. So of course the environment is going to look completely different from person to person, but when views contradict one another in damaging ways, like you believe in peace when someone else believes in fighting, then that's just not going to work. Don't ask for anything now, especially opinions from people who don't represent what you aspire to live like. This is a time of waiting because the proof is in the pudding, so be busy doing you the way you have proved and understand is correct for you and stay away from anyone or anything that is in complete contrast and if you want more information check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign the soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead and the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it your soul sign is aries and your earth sign is capricorn Listening to all of these horoscopes can give you a more rounded insight into your week ahead. This week for Leo, the Mars-Mercury conjunction in your fourth house makes you a lot more action driven. And this could be some aggressive energy in the home. That's aggressive cleaning and decluttering or aggressively organising, aggressively expressing yourself regarding something or someone in the home situation or the family situation that has been a little bit improper there may just actually be a generally aggressive situation involving someone you're related to or a situation involving the mother. And if it's not an outright disagreement or argument in that space, it could be the aggressive escalation of a parent having a headache or suffering from some body issues. Tuesday's progress with Venus in Virgo trine, Uranus, which is retrograde in Taurus, gives you some recognition. And I'm just using that as a fancy word for popularity because you can really interchange those two words as you experience one or the other, depending on the lens through which you're looking at things. This is either an experience with improved status through your work and career. And if you're in a glamorous field, something pretty and nice, then you can make some really good money and experience a lot more exposure. The run up to the weekend, roughly around Friday, when the sun in Scorpio is opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus, this is a romantic relationship or an investment agreement that requires some blatant caution. Something in this area has got a little bit out of hand or someone has the wrong idea and is getting too comfortable. Maybe they're taking over and this may need attention before it goes too far. This could even be with your children if you have them. And if it feels like your luck has done a 180 degree flip from bad to good or good to stressful, it may be good to know that this only lasts for around five days. Venus in Virgo opposite retrograde Neptune in Pisces adds more information in how it symbolises a misunderstanding. 
So it seems like the weekend is characterised by this misunderstanding where someone doesn't get your point at all. And then Saturday's big flip is Saturn, stationing direct in Pisces. And it's a resurrection of some boundaries that you realise you let slip. It's a look at your own personal power, where you give it away and where you need to stop that. And giving away your power always sounds so wishy-washy and vague. Like, what, what does it mean to give away your power? It's really just when you allow someone else to take the reins in an area of life. Or look at something like a power of attorney. That's a good logical way to describe this. You give the power to someone else to make choices that can impact and change your life in some way. So where has someone assumed the power of attorney position? Where has someone else been making decisions that are actually not your way of doing things and not very comfortable at all? With that, you restart another experience of rebirth where you kind of say once and for all, this will not happen again. And actually, you're not far from wrong because this next 10 plus years are dedicated to you understanding what your power is, what your responsibility to yourself looks like. It's likely to be tested by relationships, but if you know this going in, that this time frame is teaching you to be your own centre of your world and then to allow others in, instead of being a guest or character in theirs, then it's much more enjoyable of an experience. Mercury in Scorpio opposite Uranus, which is retrograde in Taurus, is about getting some advice. And this is like the more the merrier. So ask all of your friends, ask people the most socially sensitive way possible, depending on the nature of the advice you're looking for. And it's either going to be a lot of conflicting advice on life or your issue, where suddenly there are almost too many conflicting options, or you consistently hear the same thing from everybody you ask. Either way, you'll come to a better self-understanding of how you need to proceed. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is Taurus, your earth sign Aquarius, and listening to all of these horoscopes as well can help you get more insight into your week ahead. This week for Virgo, the Mars-Mercury conjunction in your solar third house will make you daring and strong, which is great for you, but when it comes to you and others, it could create conflict. Differences become painfully difficult to tolerate and it's not so much genuine authentic differences as it is difference of opinion regarding things that you think should be common sense. Venus in Virgo trying at retrograde Uranus in Taurus brings some excitement and adventure. You're off on travels or you're back from travels or you're planning travels again and in the absence of moving around you're taking another course, yet another course, to further your skills. As the weekend approaches the sun in Scorpio opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus is a good time to look at how comfortable you feel in your home and then adjust it accordingly. Or this may be having some visitors that make you feel less at home in your own home. And if you do have out of town friends or you're the one making the trip to visit someone else, Venus in Virgo opposite Neptune in Pisces hints that things might not go as you expected. Saturn turns direct on Saturday and you'll want to reflect back to March earlier this year for an idea of what that might mean you're facing. Look back to that time frame and figure out a mistake or a situation that happened back then. You have the opportunity to kind of make up for it or for, to fix it even in the now or you have some kind of similar scenario arise where you can make a better choice than you did last time and someone else may be taking a dominant lead or there's some external authority that you're aware of and this needs to be kept in balance this is about reconciling and making sure there's fairness between your needs goals and habits and those of someone you share your life closely with you may feel like you're being scrutinized or you're being watched to see if you're living up to your duties and scrutinized is a harsh word because you know something like an exam or a paper or a test could fall under this. It's something that gets scrutinised after you answer all the questions on the paper. So either a literal test or a test in your relationship arises or you just calmly and carefully make better choices now than you did seven to eight months ago. There's the chance of a little bit of detachment, that's possible. And if it's not that, 
it's not from a person. It could be from something you desire. This might be your subconscious asking you to withdraw for a while, change up a few things and work out your own ideas and commitments. Mercury in Scorpio opposite retrograde Uranus and Taurus would symbolize the need for tip top immaculate communication. Things are sensitive right now and you'll have to communicate the best you can. So try really hard, make sure that you are being understood instead of being painted as the villain. And don't be scared to re-explain yourself in situations that are particularly important to you. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were Your soul sign is Gemini and your earth sign is Pisces. And listening to these horoscopes can give you some extra depth into what may occur in your week ahead. This week for Libra, the Mars-Mercury conjunction happens in your financial house, which is a little bit of anger or aggression in words between family, especially if, you know, the main topics are to do with finances. And this may be that you need to take charge in a very my way or the highway kind of manner. This is the colloquial kind of put your foot down transit for you. And on Tuesday when Venus in Virgo trines retrograde Uranus in Taurus, It's an opportunity to rid yourself of debt, to clear up some of those financial stresses, something like an inheritance or some kind of windfall, some repayments that come back to you, an income that isn't part of your usual income format. One of these could help you get ahead where you felt like you were falling behind. And as you warm up to the weekend with the sun in Scorpio opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus, it's about boundaries and looking at who is overstepping them. Someone hard-headed or someone who is the sign of Taurus could impose and insert themselves into a matter that they should really be witnessing rather than joining in. Venus in Virgo opposite retrograde Neptune in Pisces makes it a time to be extra careful about credit arrangements or financial arrangements. Maybe it's that the penalty of paying something off early isn't even worth it or maybe someone's trying to convince you to use your money differently whether it is or isn't any of their business it absolutely is your decision where you place your value and how you kind of vote with your dollar where you put your money is where you identify what's most important to you read the fine print on anything agreement based during this time just to make sure that things are fair and correct and on saturday when saturn turns direct in pisces after its summer long retrograde this is a seriousness about security or happiness in your job. This could also point to seriousness with your everyday life matters. And if either one of those are a drag, it's difficult to get going every day. If life or work feels like a drudgery, if everything is just a struggle that you're not enjoying, then reconstructing things is about to be a two and a half ish year process. It may sound boring as heck to you to focus on responsibility so much, but self adjustment is far from boring. You basically get to reorganise your life in your best way. Of course, it comes with, you know, the need to be more disciplined in practical areas and maybe a crisis, a loss or a recent shock change in your life has allowed you to directly face the matters of your job or health. This time frame is about figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. Don't waste yourself on any other unnecessary activity. And if you are doing so, If you are wasting your time on something you're not supposed to be doing, a little hint might come forward in the form of a health issue. And one thing that's so important, it cannot be emphasised enough, bad dietary habits or lack of exercise, where this transit is all about self-improvement, your body may need to purge toxins. You may need to eat cleanly. Start a healthy eating and workout programme now. And you'll probably keep it for a good solid two and a half years, which is ample time to really bolster your wellness and become the healthiest version of yourself physically. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is cancer, your earth sign. Aries and if you listen to all these horoscopes you can get a more well-rounded insight into your week ahead. 
this week for Scorpio, the Mars-Mercury conjunction in your first house. This is happening in your sign. It's all about your life direction, the self in general, the beginning of everything in your entire experience. And it could bring some aggressive conversations, a sudden flu or sickness, or irritation at how much you or your partner recently spent on something. Tuesday's Venus in Virgo try and retrograde Uranus and Taurus. It makes me think everything is figured out. It's overcome within just a couple of days. So it was a disagreement, I imagine, but one that is now an agreement. And if it was a sickness, then you are probably over the worst of it. The weekend's aspects with the sun in Scorpio opposite retrograde, Jupiter in Taurus. It's about tending to an investment. The investment potential isn't just monetary. This could be time invested with a person, time invested with a company or in a project. Something you've given your all to for a second, for a moment, you might feel like you shouldn't have done that. This is a difficult time to level things out, especially with Venus in Virgo opposite retrograde, Neptune in Pisces. There may be some extracurricular activity in a relationship that gets discovered, or it might be simply a moment of looking at something or someone and wondering why you ever started that thing or what you ever had in common with that person. It could also be removing the rose-coloured glasses as someone you thought that could do no wrong shows in fact that they are human and they do have flaws too. When Saturn turns direct in Pisces, fun stuff is less fun. It's like the previous activities you used to get excited about, you're bored of them now and almost like the boring things are more fun. You're more excited about being disciplined and working on you know, creating a life that reflects the real you. You'll feel more serious in general. And if you have any kind of fears, these could surface now with the purpose of making you think more thoroughly about how you approach the things that you do and the next steps that you're taking. It's just that any fear at all related to something that you're about to embark on or already began is all about adjusting you. So if a fear pops up, it means try something a different way so that fear just dissolves away. Any relationships that don't reflect the real you as well during this time will feel uncomfortable and restrictive. So with some connections, it may be time for you to move on. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is Leo, your earth sign is Taurus, and listening to these horoscopes could give you a more well-rounded insight into your week ahead. This week for Sagittarius with Mars and Mercury conjunction happening in the darkest point of your chart, or you may already have kind of settled in and realised that things are a lot more deep lately and you have to move a lot more slowly for now because there's this intensity building beneath the surface and you don't really have much energy. You need to find a compromise within yourself. You need to find a compromise where you allow yourself certain levels of pleasure and enjoyment and fun, the things that are for you to relax and escape life without focusing too much on escaping life. So this is a healthy balance where you prioritise responsibilities first, but never rob yourself of enjoyment. Also, this could be a closer look at the habits you have that are considered self-sabotaging, particularly in the area of bad eating. If you can give yourself a few days of good rest, if you can convince a friend or a spouse to join you with some self-care, this could be really re-energising. Tuesday's Venus in Virgo trying retrograde Uranus in Taurus is a new or different schedule at work, which gives you the chance to explore a fresh routine to change up how you've recently been doing things with a different day than usual on your schedule or some kind of happy change in your work status. As you step into the weekend, the sun in Scorpio opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus is a good point to say, don't overdo the trying. And that's weird to say don't try too hard, but at the moment that's necessary because if extra effort isn't appreciated, then it's just a waste of your energy. Or if you're trying to impress when you've already won someone over, again, wasted energy. With all that being said, the Venus in Virgo opposite retrograde, Neptune in Pisces is a lack 
of clarity in schedule change. So don't forget that your work or your appointments are different from usual. Maybe print something out and pin it on the refrigerator until you are adjusted to it. This could also be clearing yourself of a sickness and a virus that you didn't even really know you had. This can be more attention to clean eating. If you have some really upsetting or annoying symptoms that have been kind of present a lot lately, try a very green and clean diet for just three days, just three days, and see if your symptoms change. Obviously check in with a medical professional if you need to regarding changing what you eat and make sure to include electrolytes so that you do not suffer nutritional deficiency. Saturday, when the planet Saturn goes direct in Pisces, you have a better idea of your future living goals. And if you've been thinking about changing your living location or something in your domestic life, if you've been going back and forth between different options, the option that is most prominent this weekend is probably the one to work towards. This is great news for your basic security and survival needs. And even the way you live currently, where you live, it just doesn't feel like home anymore. So having a solid idea of where you do want to be is very, very helpful. This could also be about setting stronger boundaries in family matters. If that's been a struggle, it gets a lot easier from here on in. This week for Capricorn, the Mars-Mercury conjunction happens in the 11th house for you, which is all about your big dreams. It's all about your social network. So things may be quite hectic in those areas, but it's just the way you like it. It's not too much, not too little. You will be adequately busy. You don't want to let yourself get too busy because if so, it suggests that a mistake in some paperwork might be made or maybe you learn of a mistake that was made in some previous paperwork due to rushing or being a little bit too busy for your own good. Now it seems to be a manageable pace, an enjoyably quick, manageable pace. And the area you may feel restless in is your current living location. You could want to expand other places kind of draw you in you're looking around for where you may want to potentially be in the future these thoughts aren't something that you have considered logically these are just spur of the moment whim thoughts of what if regarding living somewhere else tuesday's venus in virgo trine retrograde uranus in taurus is an aspect that suggests going beyond your means so if you are exploring new apartments reduce the rate of of rent or mortgage payment that you are looking at, reduce that by 20%. Or if you're in the mood for a shopping spree, bring just cash, no cards, so you can't overdo your limit. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is Libra and your earth sign Cancer. And listening to these horoscopes as well can give you more insight into your week ahead. This week for Aquarius, the Mars-Mercury conjunction is in your 10th house, which relates to your reputation, your personal power, your matters of authority, and just things to do with general order. This is 
organization and order from the top down. So this could even be something to do with your boss or any other strong standing male figure in your life. This could also be some mental stress due to an overload of work to do. So try not to take on more than you should. On Tuesday, Venus in Virgo trine retrograde, Uranus in Taurus could be a little bit of curiosity about other places for you to live. You have a huge planetary shift coming up in January into your sign that suggests entirely, entirely changing your whole life direction. And this could include looking for somewhere new to live. You need to find someone that gives you more excitement. It could be also that you drop the work you currently do and you want to do something completely and shockingly different. This could also be a subtle change in your skincare routine or how you present yourself. So some change up, switch up to do with your image. Rearrange your furniture. And I know this sounds strange, but rearrange your furniture. And by doing this, by rearranging your living space, you give yourself a refreshed experience in the now without the pressure of wondering where you need to move to next. On Friday, the sun in Scorpio opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus, you might meet or connect with or learn something that helps you feel a little bit more clear on where you are heading. Other people play a big part in the process of figuring out your next step. The thing is, all of this is great and it's definitely relevant, but not for around a year, roughly. This is all the planning part of this experience and something is either going to forcefully hold you back or you need to hold yourself back from being too impulsive and trying to make all of these changes and adjustments now. At least after January, things become more clear about when, where and how long you should be exploring or doing things differently for. This is not about rushing the changes because the changes that are about to happen will be forever long term. Be careful about who you are open with or who you invite into your private space or into your private life. Some people may have an ulterior motive or be trying to take advantage of you in some way. So keep your senses switched on. On Saturday, Saturn goes direct in Pisces, which is your house space of finances and personal important values. You can be more productive. You can accomplish a dream situation. You can even make some money along the way. This is stabilizing. And you're in the process of becoming more aware of who you are. Long term financial plans are needed to be made, but not necessarily easy to make. Things aren't very clear on an economic front. And that's okay because like I said, as of January, your life transforms massively. Explore all the options. If you want to start a new business, look into that. If you want to get, you know, new skills to help you in your career, then consider that too. You'll know what means the most to you right now. And you are ready to start exploring without making any big changes, but exploring and beginning this process of working towards a huge life change. And if you want more information, check out the reading for your soul sign and the reading for your earth sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul chose your life path ahead. And the earth sign is the sign the earth was in the day you were born on it. Your soul sign is Scorpio and your earth sign Leo. Listening to these horoscopes will help and give you a more rounded insight into your week ahead. This week for Pisces, the Mars-Mercury conjunction in your ninth house could spark some good fortune, some good luck, some wealth. It could spark some really interesting stuff with your friendships and your networks. The wealth aspect could be due to cutting out on certain things, minimising bad spending habits that give the effect of more money in the bank. Continuing in that fashion, you might see if you can get a reduced rate on your rent, your mortgage or some other kind of bill. Consolidating this kind of stuff can be really, really helpful. On Tuesday, the Venus in Virgo trine retrograde Uranus in Taurus aspect could assist you in bumping in to someone that you're actually really happy to bump into. If this leads to you hanging out, then that could be quite special. Especially if you're single, it could lead to something a little bit more. If you are in a relationship, it could be bumping into a good friend, having a good talk. And, you know, like when you can call someone up and chat at the end of the day, having a BFF to share everything with can feel kind of special. On Friday, the sun in Scorpio, opposite retrograde Jupiter in Taurus, suggests a busy weekend or if not busy, it could be the omen of a busy time 
the following week. Don't push too hard. Keep everything at your normal pace. You don't want to overdo it and exhaust yourself early on. This could also be that people are asking too many questions and you don't really want to answer them. So with Venus in Virgo opposite retrograde Neptune in your sign of Pisces, it's easier to be evasive. It's easier to be elusive. Just go ahead and brush things off. Brush off the things that you really don't want to get into. Saturn goes direct in your sign on Saturday. So this is about taking yourself more seriously, taking your life more seriously. This is the start of a new cycle where you'll learn things about yourself. In a way, it's not so much as you're learning new, new things. It's, you know, redefining the way you used to think, thinking of an odd subject in a new way or changing an opinion you had, developing and taking a different and even more mature perspective. It's a time of soul searching and self-discovery. So if you receive some guidance, obviously make sure it's, you know, healthy, happy and with good intentions. But if and when you receive guidance, consider exploring it. You'll learn some really long-term, helpful new things this week. And in accepting the reality of yourself, who you are, and living your life more authentically, this can just feel happier. That's going to be it for today's show. Next week, Venus moves into its home sign of Libra, which you would think, Venus being a lovely, sweet planet, and Libra being a compromising and nicer sign, is all pleasant and lovely.